you know, Jim, I'd, I'd be curious as you're repping the, you know, the, the next gen, the next next gen version of RNA today, circular RNA, you know, what have we, what, what can we learn, right, from the linear mRNA space as it relates to some of the analytical developments and how, if at all, are those helping influence the work you're doing with process development today and, and getting to know your own molecule? Are they applicable? Yeah. Uh, again, thank you for having me, Rose. Uh, pleasure to be here. Yeah, I, I think, and I think uh, we've already touched on it with Khaled and Jeff's comments. I think you know what has been done uh, with mRNA to, to date. What you know the guy like the third, third version of the USPs have given us is a great foundation. Um, I think it's not starting with you know it's not starting from scratch. We have a set of methods as. You know, pointed out sometimes uh, multiple methods. I think orthogonality is critical. It is. It is with any other modality. We'll need to get there. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, if you think about you know circular RNA um, and other uh, you know similar modalities, self amplifying. A lot of the you know starting materials, a lot of the inputs, a lot of the processes are very similar, right? So a lot of the methods, the you know the, whether it be double stranded. Um, you, you're looking for the same thing. So having those methods uh, established and, and understood at this point is giving us really that you know, a, a good foundation. Obviously with okay. circular, you know, you get into the whole conversation around the different you know, processes and, and manners in which you can make circular, but there will be unique challenges, right? So I think for us, uh, we've really been able to leverage what is out there, um, understand the sensitivities of assays, um, to, mm -hmm. to what degree that we, you know, is there interference? Is there not? Is there room to, is there always room or, or is there resolution in, in our methods uh, from circular mm -hmm. to, to full length linear? Um, and I think that's, that's useful. But I think as Jeff pointed out, I think, um, you know, really understanding how sensitive we need our assays, you know, mm -hmm. first of all, there, you know, how far do we need to, to reduce our impurities? How, you know, how much does that impact its, its performance, its safety? Um, and I mm -hmm. think, you know, another area is that, you know, it, it's, it, it's, it's really trying to understand, you know, where, you know, wh where the impurities are that you are concerned with. I think from a process mm -hmm. development perspective, um, you know, it wasn't that long ago that we could easily make material that had apparently different potency or different safety profile in, in vivo or in vitro. Um, but yet mm -hmm. um, from an analytical testing panel, they looked identical, right? So obviously mm -hmm. if you're in right? You didn't talk about monoclonals before we really started understanding your glycosylation, yeah. glycosylation patterns. You know, what What is it that we're not seeing analytically? So that again, mm -hmm. it, the fuzzy window or the, you know, that we just, <laughs> we're talking about, but it has been, you know, a very tight relationship between analytics and process development because, from a process side, we can throw a lot of technologies, a lot of different operating parameters, a lot of different ways to generate something. But, um, you know, again, if, yeah. it, if it looks the same but it performs different, you you have a problem. That's... You're understanding that you have gaps in that in that testing panel, and that's that's where we're mm. focused. And we're thankful mm. that we have uh, kind of riding the coattails of, of the, the vaccines and mRNA because the foundation is there. We can focus on, you know, what impurities that are specific to circular RNA mm -hmm. that we can focus on. So, yeah. Do you think the the foundation, you know, the, so we have the foundation for linear mRNA, but do you think that circular RNA is going to have to build a different analytical foundation in any way? Or is, I mean, obviously the clinical aspects, right? Once Once our products are in the clinic, that will also help sort of illuminate what's good enough. Right. But do you see us breaking free right from the foundation of linear mRNA in any way or to, yeah, to help think, us better understand? It's a great question. I think it what you end up having and I think it you can look at any other modality. Right. There's there's going to be the same foundation of what you're looking at. And I think, you know, to our current you know understanding is that foundation is pretty solid. Right. There's minor, you know, developments or kind of modifications needed um, to get what we mm -hmm. believe is the right resolution, the right, really get the right analytical output. Um, but there's going to be the product specific, right? So there's going to be a yeah. few additional uh, impurities, again, depending on which way you're, you're generating your circular. 
Um, so I think it's going to be more of a, you know, we might be building a few more stories on top of that, um, really focused mm -hmm. on on the circular aspects, and mostly around the impurities. I think as a, as a yeah. whole, the, it's, it's well established that circular, for the most part, uh, are not using modified nucleotides. I know that's where we're trying to get to. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, it, looking at you know, other, other folks that had used non-modifieds earlier on, you can learn from them, you can learn what they're looking at. But again, it all still ties back to what is that performance? What is that safety profile we need to achieve? And that's where, again, a lot more preclinical yeah. studies and eventually and hopefully very soon, you know, actual clinical studies clinical. drive back and, and really start to build what a CQA is uh, for, for mm. you know, 